dominating the world's toughest motorsport event. When Ari Vatanen and Bruce Berglund took their Camel Peugeot 405 across the finishing line in Dakar after three weeks of racing across desert, they led home a French triumph. Peugeot filled the first three places in the last Paris Dakar. The French manufacturers will contest before switching its attention to world sports prototype racing. Where the Paris Dakar is concerned, it's a case of sand, sand and more sand, and more sand. Apart from cars like the Camel Peugeots, which are custom built for the event, there is some heavy metal out there, and nearly a month of racing in the toughest conditions imaginable is no place for the sickly or the faint of heart. From the start in Paris, it was clear the biggest threat to the four factory entered Camel Peugeots would come from Mitsubishi. Experienced Andrew Cowan led the Mitsubishi Challenge and throughout the event tried to put pressure on the Camel Peugeot Brigade and some bigger and tougher looking opponents. From the beginning, it was Vatanen and Berglund who took over complete control. They were ably supported by Bjorn Valdegard, Alan Ambrosino and Philip Vamberg, with the Camel Peugeot Quartet winning 15 of the 19 special stages on the event. With so much sand around, finding the right route and sticking to it was a major problem for competitors. Valdegard is convinced that much of Vatanen's success on the Paris Dakar is owed to navigator Berglund, who hardly strayed off course throughout the whole three weeks. It was at service areas and overnight stops that the Camel Peugeot machine also moved into top gear. 65 service crew looked after the four cars, which were stripped down after each racing section and rebuilt. It was attention to detail that also helped Peugeot to a clean sweep. The Paris Dakar route is full of hidden dangers. One of the heavy metal brigade demonstrates just what we mean, but the intrepid crew survived this incident to continue on their merry way. For day after day, the Camel Peugeots also continued on their merry way. The Peugeot squad not only had the Mitsubishi Pajeros in hot pursuit, but also service crews who probably took as many chances as the works drivers. Flat and reasonably smooth sections saw the front runners able rarely to step on the gas as the rally route wound its way through Niger, Mali and Mauritania. But conditions along the way were apt to change rapidly and caught out many a crew who fell prey to lapses in concentration. Spectators along the route were few and far between and mainly confined to helicopter pilots who'd landed to stretch their legs. And even out in the wide open spaces, there were times when overtaking was a problem. The Paris Dakar attracts vehicles of all shapes and sizes with the challenge. The event provides an irresistible lure for intrepid adventurers. What other possible reason could there be for anyone wanting to ride across half of North Africa on a motorcycle? For day after day, the Camel Peugeots plowed their way across the desert with the Mitsubishi Pajeros and Lada Nevas grimly trying to stay in contention. The only major hiccup for the Peugeot squad came when Philippe Vamberg and navigator Jean de Silva mistook a dark patch of sand for firm ground, only to discover it was a thin crust covering a water hole. They were stuck for several hours, with Vamberg breaking the Peugeot's clutch in trying to extricate the car. The incident dropped the pair from a strong second lead all the way down to 12th at the finish. The 
For others, it was slow going. As the event wore on, it started to take its toll on men and machines. Among those forced to withdraw were world sports prototype champion Jean-Louis Schlesser and top rally driver Erwin Weber. Former world sports car champion and Formula One star Jackie X arrived at a control point on three wheels after his Lada shed a wheel. After hasty repairs, X continued the event and started to mount a late charge that eventually saw him finish seventh overall. Although they were in total control of the event, there was plenty of rivalry among the Camel Peugeot drivers. Latinon, Bjorg Valdegard and Ambrosino were always charging to see who could put up the fastest special stage times. And while the Camel Peugeot train simply kept rolling ever onwards, some other strange looking machinery snaked across the desert. One plus factor about racing across miles and miles of desert is that there's no shortage of overtaking points. It was simply a matter of choosing your route and going for it. Crews also occasionally came across the odd spectator or two in the middle of nowhere. The heavy metal brigade was still well represented but there was nothing that could stop Vatanon and Berglund. But for Vatanon, there was also tragedy along the route when his close friend, Finnish journalist Kaj Salminen, was killed in an accident while following the rally. After days and days of charging through nothing but sand, it must have come as a welcome relief to find yourself among rocks. The road may not be up to much, but the change in scenery is wonderful. Still going strongly were Hubert Oriol, who braved the route in a single-seater Loto buggy, and Ix and navigator Christian Tarin, who was starting to make up places at a rapid rate. As the route started the descent towards Dakar, the only fears among the Peugeot camp were that the three leading cars would pick up late mechanical problems. There were also rumblings that Peugeot had made use along the route of an illegal service van, but any thoughts other teams had of a protest succeeding were quickly squashed by the organizers. The final stages of the rally saw the Camel Peugeots wisely slow down the pace. Alain Ambrosino and Elan Baumgartner in the third place Peugeot had a lead of more than an hour over Andrew Cowan and Christian Del Ferre. Kenjiro Sinozuka and Henri Magna in fourth place in another Mitsubishi Pajero were a further hour in arrears with Ix's late charge coming to an end with suspension failure. With the Camel Peugeot slackening off, Cowan and Del Ferriere took the opportunity to get their names on the list of fastest stage times. The two Pajeros were running in tandem over the final stages, with a Toyota Land Cruiser driven by Jean Raté and Michel Vantoroux in a safe sixth place ahead of the slowing X. For Peugeot, it was a case of another Paris-Dakar mission safely accomplished. All that was left was for tired but happy crews to lead an impromptu sing-along with the local.